Hey guys, we are headed to go. It's uh, Sunday, November the 14th. And I got a call from a customer. I've put an indoor system in, in his and his wife's house. Left the condenser because it was a really nice 410A condenser. But somebody had took the 410A condenser and hooked it on a very old gas furnace. But the coil was rated for 410A, but it was just done poorly. Anyway, that's not the point of this video. The point is that I've done work for these people before. Uh, and then recently, right after I had surgery, they called me because their rent house, I think they have one rental, and it's a house, not a mobile home. Uh, the unit went out and I sent my my guy out, my tech out, and I couldn't work. I mean, I had just got home from surgery. And he, we walked, you know, I stayed on the phone with him and he found it really low on Freon, uh, took the leak detector up to the attic and uh, found multiple leaks in the evaporator and had a Linux gas furnace that was about 20 years, right at 20 years old, you know, it was electronic ignition and all that. And uh, her and the husband were kind of leaning towards just changing the coil in the condenser. Matter of fact, I worked up two prices. I worked up a price to do the complete system and a price to do the, like, you know, the furnace, the coil and the condenser, and then just the, cause it is gas. And then just the coil and the condenser. They chose the coil and the condenser but after talking to the husband, I was able to, you know, convince them to do the whole system, being that the furnace was at 20 years of age and it was over, it was a little oversized for the house. It was like a hundred and 120,000 BTU gas furnace when a hundred thousand was plenty to suffice the house. So the point is, this is a warranty call. We've had issues with this gas furnace. When the system was put in, I wasn't able to be there. I've seen pictures of the job, but you know, pictures don't really do you justice. Um, so I'm gonna get to actually see the job now. And we've had to put, well, when they put the system in, everything was fine. And then a week later they called and said nothing was happening. Now, thank God there's nobody living in this house right now because they're, they're, they're doing some remodeling. But I've gotta get this thing under control before they get renters in there. They called and said that the unit wasn't doing anything. So I figured we had a drain issue. That was not the case. Um, the board was throwing a polarity code that the polarity was reversed on the high voltage, which is weird because that was like a week and a half later after the initial install. Reversed the polarity, I walked in my tech through it over the phone, nothing happened. It would just run the blower co constantly, not the inducer. So we didn't have an open limit because if it would have been an open limit, we'd have had the blower motor and the induced draft motor running at the same time. So I did some trouble, you know, I was some troubleshooting over the phone. I even had the tech support guy meet up with my tech. And since I couldn't get there, cause I just couldn't go. And he determined it was a bad board also. So we changed the board and same thing happened right away. Same code, everything. The tech guy, the tech guy from Ream went to the job site and did troubleshooting himself and said, we hit another bad board. I said, ah, I didn't like the sound of that, but it is possible. So we put another board on there, problem solved. That's been shit, probably a month ago. And uh, cause, yeah, cause it's been over a month since I've, almost two months since I've had surgery. And uh, now I got a call this morning saying that it's do, it's down again. It's doing the same thing again. So I'm hoping that it's drain issue or something and we didn't hit and we don't have another issue with the with a board. Um, I just don't see how this thing could continue to eat boards and unless there's something wrong with the wiring harness or something, but I don't know how, we gotta get this one straight though before, before he gets tenants in there. So, um, Let's see what we can find. Oh. 
Okay. Here's the uh, coil that's spun around backwards from the furnace. Let me get the light turned on. There we go. Let's see. Yep. Most definitely a drain issue. I think I see the problem. Okay. All right, so we most definitely have a drain issue. Uh, I just set that there so it wouldn't leak on top of that liquid line. We're going to go under it. And when it connects there, it's too high. There's no fall. I'm going to cut it here and then pick this up. And then I got plenty of slack to stab it in, and that'll give the drain plenty of fall. Where well, we're going to go under the liquid line. And uh, I got to teach my guys about some drain stuff. Just gotta glue it. Coming up here. That looks much better to me. This contraption that they had. glued up 
if for those of you that don't believe it, you can see the glue. This side is glued. This is glued. I checked it. The 90s glued. Seems to be taking it good. Yeah, I can see the bottom of the pipe now. Just a trickle. I gotta talk to my guys. I'm not afraid to say, but I will show them about this reducer that comes with these SS1s. And instead of putting the one inch to three quarter reducer, he shoved a 45 into the float switch. And that's my guy that did that. So we're gonna address that. I'm gonna leave that right there. I should cut that out but it's already glued to the float switch and I, I'd have to redo the float switch. So it's not leaking. I'm gonna leave it. We're coming over here to do a maintenance. Well, it's brand new, but we're gonna fire up the heater and check the gas pressure. And I'm gonna bring him with me and I'm gonna make him redo it because I well told him to put that in here and then put, the, and then put a 45 and put pipe directly into that. So, apparently they didn't listen. Okay, but well, she's flowing. Put that right there where it won't trip it. Don't trip. So the machine has come back online. I'm a little disappointed in my guys though. Actually very disappointed. Look how close they put this damn thing to the house. I mean, look at that. That, that pisses me off. I understand that the slab was right here, but we laid a pad down. They could have brought the pad over this way. Brought the unit over extended the line set a bit then 45 into it so we're going to address that too because i'm not happy about that at all if i would have been here that would not have gotten done it just goes to show the little things that they don't pay attention to or don't care to when you're not around that's why i prefer to be on all the jobs because i definitely would have drugged that pad over to at least right there where my foot is Extended the line set, brought the unit over, then went into it. So, we're going to address some stuff that was done on this job. All right, guys, I'm going to try to make this ending short and sweet. So, this is the first time, again, that I've been on this job. I had three guys on that job. I had my, my technician that's with me full-time, my nephew, who came down from Alexandria to help me with some change outs that I had because my dad has more people. And uh, he came down, he was on that job and then we had a, just a basic greenhorn, no nothing helper. And um, so I can't pass the blame on to one individual. So what I do is I pass the blame on to my, to my guy and to my nephew. Reason being is because the greenhorn helper, he doesn't know any better, he was just a gopher. But my guy, my technician, he knows better. 
that drain, I explained it to him. My nephew knows better. My nephew's been doing this for a few years now and he's gotten really good. And uh, he knows better than that stuff. I don't know who installed the condenser. I believe my nephew did it. And he knows better than to put one that close to the house. He knows that kind of stuff pisses me off. Pardon my French. But I saw things on that job that I did not like. Um, I didn't show it, but the wires, like the high voltage, they used no Romex connector. They just went right through the metal. And uh, again, my guy knows better than that. Um, so does my nephew. And they they ran all the wires instead of running them under the furnace because the furnace is sitting on heater stands where everything's nice neat and uniform they went across the blower door so the float switch wires the low voltage wires the um everything is is coming off the floor across the burner door and then going into the furnace which would have never happened if i was there it's ugly it, it doesn't look good today's sunday i wasn't i believe me i wanted to sit there and redo all that but it's sunday you know i'm trying to spend a little time with my family so i'm not going to do that today but we are coming i'm going to their main house they have two systems on their main house i'm going there to maintenance them i want to come back over here and fire that heater up check gas pressure because they didn't do that and we are going to and i'm bringing my guy with me we're going to redo that drain that reducer will get installed and we will redo that little piece of drain, do it the right way. The wires will get unwired and move to the bottom of the furnace for neatness. There will be a Romex connector installed. So, and that condenser, I'm not gonna pump it down and open up a system just to move it away from the house. It's not the end of the world. I mean, we still have enough slack in the line set to where we can turn it to get the panel off to clean it. Cause with the range take, well, that big tall unit, cause it's a five ton. You gotta take three screws out, pop it off, you clean the coil. So the fact that I could still twist the unit, uh, the fact that I could still twist the unit to clean it, I'm okay, I, I mean, I'll let it slide. I'm not gonna pump a system down and open up a system just to, you know, if it was touching the house, it'd be different, but y'all get what I'm saying. So I've gotta address some stuff. I took some pictures for my guy to look at. I'm also gonna send them to my nephew. It just goes to show when you own a small shop like this and you don't stay on top of everything, things are not gonna get done like you like them. No matter how much you train these guys and no matter how much you preach, they're still gonna take shortcuts when you're not around. The only reason I wasn't around was because I was recovering from surgery. That's over with, I will be around now. Um, so, um, I gotta get some, again, I'm not sitting, you know, I'm not sitting here trying to single those guys out, but if they're gonna work for me, they gotta do a better job than that. And I'll get, you know, find out who, who did what, but the thing is they both know better than to do some of the things they did. They had no fall on the drain. That should have been caught just like that. I mean, I, fit, I caught it in five minutes and knew that's what the problem was and fixed it, now we're flowing. So anyway, I dragged the, this ending out longer than I wanted to. So uh, yeah, let me got, let me know what you guys think in the comments. I'm not ashamed to show that. You know, I, it's my company, but I couldn't come inspect it. Uh, I mean, all in all, they did a good job. The install is clean. You know, the plenum's clean. We had a transition made to the old plenum. It's clean, nicely installed. Everything's nicely installed. It's just the little details that they messed up on, like the wiring, that drain connector. You know, not the end of the world. Not the end of the world. They, uh, But other than that, they did a really good job. I mean, I don't want to sit here and just nail them in the ground, but all in all, they did a nice job. If they would have moved the condenser away from the house, I wouldn't be as upset. And I don't like that they didn't use that reducer on that float switch. So... Um, but you know, they definitely, they definitely did more better, more good work than they did bad work. So I give them props for that. And they're both, you know, uh, my got my tech is barely a year in if he, if he's even a year in. And then my nephew, I'd say is about, he's got about five or six years in total, 
but a few of those years he didn't care he was just a helper but i'd say tech experience he's probably got a couple you know where he started understanding and trying to learn things so they both know better because i've showed them both i've showed them both how to do things how not to my dad has showed my nephew so anyway long story short they did overall i'm okay with the job because they did do a, a, a good job but there's just some issues that i didn't like so all right guys uh thank you all for watching and we'll see y'all on the next one